So the new A Warrior Spirit novella collection that was released recently did something really cool. It tied all three stories together under a single theme, that theme being separation. Pebbleshine showed us physical separation as a fatal mistake brought her unmeasurable distance away from her clanmates. Tree showed us social separation when his status within the sisters led him to being isolated and outcast. And Mothwing, she showed us mental separation. Her beliefs made it hard for her to fit in with River Clan. Spiritual separation or cultural separation can also work here. This video will be specifically about Mothwing, and since I've talked about her before, how about I bring in Flixamy this time to shake things up a little? How do you feel about that, Blix? Hello, I heard the name Mothwing and I was summoned to this channel. I came running on my two little peats to talk about <laughs> the best cat in the entire books. Mothwing is my child. She is my sun. She is my stars. If anything ever happens to a hair on this cat's head, I will personally explode into a thousand tiny pieces that you will have to put in a jar labeled pieces of a broken man. Every day I wake up in fear that Mothwing will die in the broken code, and if that day arrives, I will yeet myself out of the fandom for the rest of eternity. Everyone, pray for Akira for having to deal with me and my crazy adoration for this perfect kitty cat. <laughs> he, he is pretty much a saint. Agreed. <laughs> okay, okay. So, over the years, Warrior Cats has had several characters who have had trouble fitting in but only a couple characters have outright rejected the existence of their warrior ancestors in Star Clan. But Mothwing had a very good reason to. Star Clan existed distinctly outside her culture. It's for clan ancestors. Her lost brother Tadpole or her mother Sasha would never have a place there. From the very start, the difference in culture molded her into the shell of a complete outsider. The other cat in River Clan. I thought it was fascinating that Mothwing always seemed to be on shaky ground on who she was and where she was supposed to be. Constantly, she finds herself going along with the flow of what others say, doing what others tell her to do. However, every once in a while, we get powerful honesty from her. Mostly in the form of blurting something out or in her inner thoughts. I noticed a really strong example of this on page 215, where her inner thoughts say, I feel like I belong in this medicine den. Mothwing finally has a sense of what it is to belong, what it is to have a purpose. She doesn't want to be a medicine cat just to fit in with her clan or so that she can have power or glory, but rather, Mothwing was born to heal others, and deep down she seems to know it. She has a moment of clarity and understanding and she is freed, if only for a moment, from her self-doubt and worry. But of course, this moment of belonging is short-lived because accepting the medicine cat role came with an alarming caveat. In order for her clan to accept her in the position, she had to make a connection with Star Clan despite her already having heavy doubts about the existence of the spirit cats. Her doubt and fear clouds her mind again though as she trains to be a medicine cat. Mudfur is cautious about letting her have full duties in her training as he waits for a sign from Star Clan. He refuses to let her even touch a patient. Already dealing with her skepticism of the clan's beliefs, Mothwing finds herself incredibly frustrated that she can't fully jump into belonging to her role, and once again must face the sting of separation. I believe this, in part, helps to solidify a part of her resentment and anger we see towards Star Clan later in the book. Had Star Clan accepted her for who she was in the beginning, perhaps she would have had an easier time accepting them as well. But instead, she feels like, once again, she is seen as lesser than a clan-born cat, and can't be trusted. And so, she doesn't trust them, building up more walls of resentment between her and Star Clan. While other cats look up to Star Clan as a way of honoring their families, she can only look to Star Clan for their role in protecting the clans. And their new novella shows, time and time again, she can't rely on them to do so. They don't support her pursuit of becoming a medicine cat, they can't stop cats such as her mentor Mudfur from dying, but the main reason she doesn't believe in Star Clan would have to be her wicked brother Hawkfrost. This novella gave us the dive into Hawkfrost manipulation that went deeper than we've ever seen before. We see that faking the sign wasn't to help her, 
it was to save his own reputation so he could be chosen for deputy. In fact, he's so obsessed with being deputy that he wanted Stormfur removed on the slightest chance that Mistyfoot liked him better. When Mothwing sacrifices her honor to comply with his desire to out Stormfur, he turns around and mocks her for not fully committing to his awful plan. While reading the novella, I was struck by how both siblings, Mothwing and Hawkfrost, dealt with the feelings of being out of place and the separation and othering in RiverClan. Mothwing seemed to be consumed by doubt and fear, whereas Hawkfrost was driven by his ambition and anger. I believe both characters yearn desperately for a place in RiverClan, but act as a foil to one another. Mothwing, on one hand, wants nothing but a purpose and place among her clanmates. Despite lacking ambition and power, she ends up with an important position in her clan due to her talent and her heart. Hawkfrost, however, believes that it takes a position of power to give him a purpose in place, and instead uses his talents to try and secure his place while rejecting his heart. He just goes on and on about wanting to protect Mothwing when deep down he's pursuing his own selfish interest. And it goes so far that when she hears of his role in Firestar's near death, she can't even bring herself to doubt Leaf Pool's words. Mothwing thinks that if Star Clan had any trickle of power, they would have done something. But even in the Great Battle, Star Clan lets Hawkfrost and the Dark Forest rip her clan apart before joining the battle and chasing them off. Mothwing, the once anxious and doubtful other of River Clan, comes face to face with Star Clan during the final battle of the Dark Forest. She has shown that this whole time, StarClan is real, they are watching, and they do exist. Mudford tells her that she has always belonged in RiverClan, and that her destiny has always been to be a medicine cat. Mothwing is finally given acceptance from the clan's ancestors, something she has desperately been waiting for her entire life. However, we don't see her fall to her knees and sing praises and adoration of StarClan. We don't see her welcome the starry warriors into her life with open paws. But rather, we see a moment of Mothwing's anger, her brutal honesty. Why now, after all this time, do they somehow think she is worthy? She has been stung and rejected by StarClan her whole life. She was shut out time and time and time again, and faced with the struggle she believed a clanborn cat would have never been given. She believes she has watched them continually hurt and kill innocent cats, cats she has sworn to protect and devoted her whole life to healing. In her life full of suffering mockery from her rogue background, her choice to be a medicine cat, her own insecurity, StarClan never helped her. She had to get by on her own. Over her life, Mothwing felt so much shame in her position. I believe this is a clear example of imposter syndrome. Which is what happens when someone doubts their accomplishments and believes that despite all they've achieved, deep down they are a fraud. For so long, Mothwing has this sinking feeling inside that without a connection to Star Clan, her role meant nothing, and everything she built up for herself was based in lies and deceit. When she discovers it was Hawkfrost who tampered with the sign, her budding hope that the clan's ancestors finally had accepted her crumbles. She finally felt like she had a place and purpose among the other healers in the clans, just to have it shatter in front of her due to her brother's own desires to belong. Like Akira mentioned, I think this is the moment we see Mothwing's final thread of conviction to StarClan snap, and she cuts off her ties with StarClan completely. After all, if they continue to shut her out and punish her for being another, she's gonna do the same to them. I believe that Mothwing chooses to not believe in StarClan because in her heart she thinks they don't believe in her. She instead finds strengths in the one thing she knows is true. She is a medicine cat who was born to heal, and she will continue to do so whether or not StarClan agrees. Mothwing refuses to allow them to separate her from her destiny. She comes to realize that she is not a fraud that her ability to save lives has, and always will be, a wonderful service to those she loves. She finds that as an individual, she has power, and she ends up bringing something to the table that other medicine cats don't. Because while other medicine cats beg for StarClan's help in times of need, she is able to find complete trust in herself and in her clanmates. 
Star Clan is not all powerful. They are far from it. And through Mothwing's experiences, she was able to come to this understanding better than any cat before her. Over time, we see that Mothwing continues to be an incredibly gifted medicine cat, despite her rejection of Star Clan. However, it is interesting to see that she does seem to know that there is worth in having a connection to the clan's ancestors. She seeks help from Leafpool, absolutely her girlfriend, ThunderClan's medicine cat, to guide her apprentice's faith. Mothwing doesn't try to convince Willowpaw that a medicine cat just doesn't need StarClan, but instead, she allows her apprentice to grow and master her faith for the betterment of her clan, something Mothwing just can't do. Despite the difference in belief between her and Willowshine, Mothwing lets Willowshine follow the path she chose. She gives her apprentice freedom in her beliefs, something Mothwing wished her mentor Mudfur had done when she was in training. She takes no issue with cats following Star Clan because she once suffered mockery and discrimination for what she believed in, and she wouldn't wish that on any other cat. In the ultimate twists of her beginning as a character, we watch the tables completely flip in Mothwing's story. In the beginning, we watched as the young, anxious, other, separate Mothwing put herself out to Star Clan in hopes that they'll accept her for who she is and what she can do for her clanmates, begging for the approval of ancestors she's unsure of even exists, but is shut out by unanswering stars. In the end, StarClan puts themselves out to Mothwing, giving her the acceptance she's always longed for. However, now hardened by the years of separation, Mothwing rejects the approval of ancestors she now confidently knows exists, and she herself shuts out the answering stars. Thanks so much for coming on, Bliximi. This was a blast. Thank you so much, Akira, for letting me pollute your channel. Akira is the bomb. I would die for him. Peace out. <laughs> Alright, bye everyone.